Hello and welcome. This is Nathan's Garage. I'm Nathan Kershaw and this is The Mod. And also thank you to everybody for supporting the channel. You are all awesome. So let's put more of her face on. Last night as I was finishing, I realized that before I used a bungee strap to hold the hood in place. And I don't know if you can see, so that's the, there's a bit of like an overhang on this side and god it's really really similar you can see that there and on that side you've got that you know and let's say both both aspects of the car were 50 years old so had a life so that may be it maybe as good as it gets what i'm going to do now is i'm going to put the fenders on while i've still just got the few tacks in the front end and just see if anything glaring pops out so right now, uh, the the fender acted like it was doing that, as in the front's probably too far out. But I don't mind a bit of flexing if it means I can leave the front of the BN, BMW with that cross member as strong as it is. I don't mind the front being a bit longer, it'll give me a bit more room. And nobody can tell. I'm not going to lie, I think... I think I'm happy. Like, tire pokes the same on both sides. Yeah, just a little bit. And a little bit. I mean, you know, there's movement in the, in the hood right now. But, that's pretty good, me thinks. If I go level with the bottom of this valance, then look at that. That's great. I may even be able to go up a bit. Seriously, it's like this car was made to go on a Z3, apart from the six of the nice and simple wanting to keep everything as oe as possible those the original mounts the rubber things you see right there and the blue thing is the bmw mount which i chopped off and that is a six and a quarter inch extension which is going to get welded up there hello i'm off my zoom what's going on tell me stories i'm taking a break radiators that's the story of today. Uh, it fits now. Yesterday it was a little high. Top security. Oh That's yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Because it was just held on by the houses. Right, right. Yep. So, so perfect. So there made it the is. mounts down here. Yeah. So okay. it's all OEM as BMW said it should be. Is that a little low to the ground? Like, are we gonna have to be careful in dips and such? When I start to compete in, you know, off-road racing with it, yes, it's gonna be an issue. But I'm hoping that me driving it like a granddad. I thought it was like a street racer. I didn't think it was an off-road <laughs> It's definitely a street racer. Changing the plan on that, I <laughs> uh, Well, you know, it's it's down as low as as I'm willing to have it go and it's right at the bottom of the valance. Okay. So it is a bit vulnerable, but only time will tell. But it proves that the radiator didn't have to go in the back. It just, you know, because it can fit in the front. Did you need to prove that? I kind of knew. I drink and I know things. <laughs> so <do> I. <laughs> um, first of all, I have to acknowledge, and I hope everybody acknowledges, how this is perfectly correlating with the Happy Days logo that we designed. It's very on brand with the blue and the orange together. So there's that, which makes me happy. That's why it took me so long to find the front end. 
this is actually quite the moment because I get to see how it fits panel gap wise with the front end having moved now. It's so cute, it's so cute with the little blue grill sticking out. It looks like teeth. It does look like teeth. Doesn't it? That looks like it's going. <laughs> it's hard to tell the difference. <laughs> Well, we are definitely plodding along today. Radiators done, fully mounted. Bottom mounts are in. Top mounts are in. Uh, just ordered some a 45 degree extender angler to take that down. And I've just ordered a six inch extender to join those two. So they are on their way. That's done. I think holes, I think this is gonna get a fair amount of holes in it. That's gonna get a fair amount of holes in it. And then the base of the hood, I think, is going to get holes as well. That may do it. I'm going to wear uh, flock off the sides for the radiator so airflow gets forced through. But that'll be all underneath the bumper anyway, so you won't see it. Right, a lot of you are probably going to be very happy now because I've decided to split it and extend it. Keep calm shop on and here we have it the day that 99 percent of watchers of this channel have been screaming out for it is fender slicing time one thing that makes it i think a lot more complicated on an elephant's foot rear fender than a normal standard bug rear fender is the fact that they've had to create such a hump here they have a big ramp up in this area now you don't have that on a standard Beetle Fender. It just goes out straight. So you can cut right next to this and just add metal. Now, what I think I've got to do is start my cut here. Sorry, start my cut here. What I think I've got to do is start my cut here. I'm gonna follow closely up until about that point where it becomes level. Let's say there, where it becomes level. Then I'm gonna follow it straight down because this is my only area that I'm gonna be able to add flat metal right there. Cause that's up, that's down, that's flat right there. And then I'm gonna cut around the light, try not to make a complete pig's ear of that. And then down to the side of the, uh, Bump them out. Okay. So again, the reason why I'm doing this cut, which as I say, I've looked on YouTube to try and find Super Beetle rear fender widening, but there's probably a reason it doesn't happen. And it's because of this, it's because of that, this area, the standard Beetle does not have that. It comes, comes flat out like that. So I'm gonna come here, that's flat. I'm gonna round that edge right there and then straight down. 
So hopefully, well, we'll see. I guess that's what you call past the point of no return. Okay, so. <clears throat> Oh, you seem annoyed. I'm sorry. No, 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 so no, 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 no. I'm just a bit brain dead. I'm just, no, no, I'm not annoyed at all. Okay. No, I'm not annoyed at all in any way. This is totally cool. Okay. I'm totally fine. Okay. No, I really, <laughs> it's all okay. good. I'm just, I'm just. A... Um. So this is the Baja bug that we all wanted. It is? Yeah. Does that, it means just where it's all cut out like that? Yeah, all well, the wheels showing. Okay. So basically, just going to add four inch strips. Wait, oh, so today's the day you're going to give everybody what they wanted? Indeed, indeed. Well, that's nice. Unfortunately, I cut on the wrong side of the bumper bracket hole, yeah. so I've got to cut that out and re-weld it to this. So that's another thing. Fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so yes, at the end of today, we'll at least have strips and we'll at least have some of the fender that's okay. going over and covering right. the wheel. Oh, you know what? Let's hold it in place. See what it looks like. Rather a lot wider. <laughs> oh my word. Okay. We are getting close to first mock up. So cut all the pieces of metal to four and a half inches. Then I've got half an inch on each side. You can see the mark there. Because the fender's going to be coming out around three and a half inches. <clears throat> so I'm trying to evenly space them so it'll just. Even the load. Okay, let's give it a go. Interesting, as it comes out, I feel like the kind of distances, if you will, it isn't completely straight. Interesting. So looking down at the tire, I kind of want to twist it, pull the front out. And push the back in. Fine, whatever you guys may have been right, it may be looking particularly awesome. <laughs> oh my god, that's insane. I think that's about the right. I mean, Jesus, I don't even know on tire poke. I may take it in a little bit more. I've got, I have the edges for the fenders in the pile. I feel like I want to, oh, I don't know. Oh my God, so many decisions. <laughs> it's very, <laughs> rather dramatic. Well, I kind of got ahead of myself and started welding. So I hope it's right. Kind of looks okay. Um... So, yeah, I mean, once you've kind of made the cut, I thought that, you know, I mark three and a half inches on these spaces all the way up and, it, it, and the gap is not the same three and a half inches all the way because if I did that, the wheel wasn't right. <clears throat> so it's kind of a case of like getting your first clamp on and then having a bit of a wriggle and a wiggle and just going by eye. So... That's where we're at so far. Now I only have really relatively thick metal, which I don't want to use because it will be so difficult to um, bend it. So I need to nip to the steel guy and get some 18 or 20. I'd like to use 18 because I just always like to use thicker metal, but if I think 20 is going to then way easier and form way easier but yeah super beetle i think that's the way to go i think if i'd have cut right down this line all the way i just think it would have been a pig's ear not that it isn't right now <laughs> ladies and gentlemen come on let's get serious shia and hammer and dolly set oh yeah oh yeah Nathan's car and body. The guy who built this car before me would have probably just put Bondo on the cardboard and call it done. 
One of you guys sent me a link to uh, an older gentleman, I think it was Brazilian or something like that, widening the rear fender of a Beetle and doing the filler strip all in one go. I had a go at that. It's now going to be in several pieces. So instead of going all the way up and over, we're going to do like one there, uh, probably one there, probably get away with one big one there. Um, so this is, he said it was 20 gauge, but it feels thick to me, so it may be 18. Um, so we are perfectly kind of butted all the way down. <clears throat> so I'll tack it, get that hum hammer and dolly set out and give it a good smack if it needs it. Always find something. This is one of those situations on this car now. There's spot welds on the front, spot welds on the other front, and this is all the new spots. So every time I've got the gun in my hand, I should just walk around the car and spot it so it doesn't deform the walk. See, the thing for me is, I don't want to use any Bondo. <laughs> None. So this needs to be really, really, really flat. So definitely need to take our time. That's why it's taking me about at least an hour to, after I cut this, to really get it to butt perfectly. So we'll do this part now. We need some leverage, crowbar. The weld needs a gap to sink into anyway, so you don't want anything perfectly touching. It'll just sit on top. So one of the dolly hammers <clears throat> has a point on the back of it. Once the uh, fender's off, I may be able to just, I don't know, maybe tap that straighter or wheel off and tap it. We'll see. Oh god, there's a huge gap for all my fannying and farting about. Huge gap. So for all my fannying and farting about, still got a gigantic gap there. Anyway, two pieces are in. Crazy. Crazy. So when I build the mounts for the bottom, I'll be able to just twist it in as I need to, like that, about there I'd say, lovely. You know, I'm very happy, as I just said to Wipetastic, it's not been the longest day but I'm starting to get a little bit tired, back achy, and that'll make me make mistakes, so I'm going to call it, officially, but it looks great. The only thing is, you can see the flat part has an ever so slight down gradient, if I'd have started my cut half an inch over i think it would have been slightly more flat wife tastic says she likes it sloping down a bit so what do i know one thing about the way i've done it is i'm gonna have this flat area there and i just don't know what that's gonna look like probably a bit silly but whatever so tomorrow definitely gonna finish all that off and then may actually do this side just do the quarter, finish off the quarter, mount the bottom of the fender, get that pushed in, nice little bit of tire poke. Oh, I'm really happy, really happy. So, me taking this direction may be all down to you guys. Thank you. It looks great, and it's going to look great. It's going to look even greater. I'm very, very happy. Thank you for being persistent. I have my ideas sometimes and I have to mull them over and move past them while going through them. Everything's still moving along. Great. I think I'm gaining about my third or fourth wind now. Um, just come out of a bit of a lull, I'd say, over the last week, but still push through. Um, good stuff ahead. Awesome bodywork stuff and pure looks stuff. Water pipes on the way. So yeah, a couple of days and we'll, we should be able to drive her for a little bit longer. She's registered on the road, uh, going to put insurance on her, find a windshield. It's all coming together. <laughs>
<laughs> it's all coming together. Can you believe it? Oh my god. Okay, so that's it. This has been Nathan's Garage. I have been Nathan Kershaw. This has been the Mott. See you next time.